Hello guys, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today will be a shorter video. We will flip our game to a landscape view and also get rid of some of the Android user interface around our game. Let's go. Before we start, this channel have a Discord server where you can discuss and ask questions about the tutorials of this channel. Or maybe you just want to swing by and say hello. We will also use GitHub throughout this tutorial. There you can check the most recent code, but also code from previous episodes. That comes in handy when something works differently on your side compared to what you see in the episode. And for the people that want to go the extra mile to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee page and also a membership option on YouTube with some basic perks. With that being said, let's get back to the episode. Last episode, we added our joystick, or rather something that simulates a joystick. We began by going over how it will work and also what we expect it to do. With a new class that will handle our user inputs, not just for the joystick, but other ones as well, further down the road. We could start checking if the event was pressed inside a circle or not, and if it was, the user would move the player. With the temporary triangle, we can get an idea on how the calculations are being done here. Then to tie this together, we made sure that the player faces the direction it's going, and also making sure that the animation works as it should. Now, let's flip our game. All right, let's take a look at where we are right now in the development. All right, so this looks familiar. We can move our player in any directions. We let go, the animation stops. And yeah, this is where we are at. And where did the skeleton go? There it comes. And of course, <laughs> the skeleton isn't animating because it's using the same uh, animation method for the, as the player is doing. But all right, we want to flip the game on its side like this. But this is obviously wrong. We can't, like, we're not going to have our head on the side. So something must be different. And it's very easy to change this. What we want to do here is to go to our project and in our manifest file. In here we have different, not rules maybe, but information about the label, the icon and so on. But we want to care about the activity part right here, for now at least. And there's a few different ones, which is the activity we start, etc. We are just going to add here Android uh, colon screen orientation and set landscape and run this again. And the player now starts in the top left corner and it looks correct. We don't have access to our our joystick because it's hidden somewhere and the skeleton is running around and not on the correct spot. So that's all we had to do to flip it to landscape. And when we do a flip, we can go to our main activity in our on create before set content view. We can add something called display metrics dm equals new display metrics. Then we're going to take this display metrics and put it inside our window manager. So get window manager, get default display, get real metrics, not refresh rate, real metrics and DM like that. So now we can use DM to get the uh, display metrics of this window. So we can make a simple system dot out. So suso uh, with then plus dm dot with pixels and then height plus dm dot height pixels and then we bring up our log cat and then we run and see what we get and we get the width is 1920 and the height is 1080 so yeah that looks looks correct so it's flipped so the phone now is bigger in width than it is in height so yeah, that's how we do it. And we're gonna take this width and height and store them as constant values that we then can use later in our game. So public static int game width game height. So game width will be equal to dm.get, not get, but width in pixels, game height equals dm dot height in pixels. So now whenever we want to you know, get the width and height, all we have to do is to call 
main activity dot game width and game height. Next up is to get rid of the title, this uh, status bar, and also the navigation bar here. That too is pretty straightforward. What we're going to do is to go before our set content view, we're gonna say get window, not window manager, get window dot get decor view and dot set system UI visibility. And in here, we are going to set different types of flags as they're called. A flag for hiding the navigation bar, flag for hiding the status bar and so on. And the way this is going to look is going to be a bit different from what we are used to. We're not just going to say 10 and that's it. We are going to call view dot and now the flags we want to uh, set. So for example, to hide the navigation bar, we say uh, view dot system. Uh, what do we have? UI flag full screen and also view dot system hide navigation and this little thing here is a bitwise or operator now the reason why they have done it like this i don't know and to be honest i don't really understand how this is working but all we need to do is if you want to set different types of flags or rules that's going to be hiding and changing the behavior of the Android UI, if you will, then we set flags and then they are being taken care of. So for now, if we run this, we hide the, yeah, the navigation bar and also made it full screen so we don't have the status bar up here. But as soon as I get them back by dragging in a corner, they pop up and now they're there. So we want to make sure that they stay hidden and that we're going to call view dot sticky. We should have something sticky UI flag immersive sticky. And we can probably just add some space here so it's easier to see. Like so. So now we have UI flag immersive sticky and we run this again. And I drag it down. It comes up in a few seconds, it disappears. Perfect. And the next step is to get rid of this title bar and also make sure that it doesn't resize whenever we are uh, getting the status bar or na navigation bar back. So we are going to call add one of those, then view dot system UI flag layout stable we need view dot system ui flag hide navigation no we already had that one layout that's the one i was looking for flag layout hide navigation and the last one we need is view dot system UI flag layout full screen and we save that and we run this again now we don't have the status bar the title bar or the navigation bar and if we get them back they disappear very quickly or after a few seconds so yeah now we have a game that covers the entire screen of our phone and if you have a camera on your own phone that covers part of the screen or which or rather which is part of the screen so you would have like a camera in the center here or on the corner of the screen we're gonna cover that in the next chapter here so let's go to that and on my phone my physical phone i have a camera at the top left corner of the screen so the camera is part of the uh, touch screen or the screen on the phone uh, we don't have that in our emulator or on our emulator here, but imagine it being here in the corner. And if we want to draw in this area, you would have sort of a, especially in landscape, you, would, you wouldn't be able to uh, see. So for example, if we had this status bar 
Like imagine it being here and then the player not being visible if he goes behind it. But if you want to draw on this little section, then all we have to do is to take or to call this get window again. So get window dot get attributes dot layout uh, in display cutout mode. So it's called the cutout mode is equal to equal to window manager dot layout params dot layout in display cutout mode always default never or short edges and we want to set the short edges and we're going to get an error here because field requires api level 28 current the minimum is 24 that's what we have in our gradle here build i think yeah so the minimal sdk is 24 which is api for uh, android if you had 23 or lower you wouldn't be able to install this app so in here all we have to do is just surround it with if so it checks if the current sdk the api of the phone or the emulator is more than 28 or equal then we change it otherwise we don't so you won't see you won't see any difference on this emulator because it does not have this cutout but on your physical phone here if i run it i have a one plus so if i run it you won't be able to see it but my player can now move in that uh, cutout section which is the status bar if the phone was in portrait mode which is what we want or don't want it's up to you and we're not going to see this difference on the emulator but if you have a phone that has a cutout section and want to draw over that or despite that that's up to you if you don't want it just remove it and we're good to go and now of course all we have to do is to move the joystick up here somewhere because we're going to imagine having the joystick here on the left and then attack button or use button on the right side here later so it's going to be like a uh, game controller if you will an old school game control so what we want to do now is to move it here so let's go to our project go to our inputs right touch event where we have the circle x center let's go 250 y center uh, so the maximum is 1080 1080 let's give it a 700 and radius let's increase it to 150 and see what we get i mean it's kind of big let's move it down a little bit more actually 800 let's give that a try uh yeah it's good for now uh so it's still working but our skeleton is gone he is running around with values that does not match our new width and height so let's go to our game panel right yes and at the top here where we first initialize the skeleton uh, for x we're gonna go game width and we can import it and then game height so it's flipped and let's see there should be one more yeah here uh, for switching the skeleton's direction if skeleton position dot y is more than that we say height and here for right game width so let's give this a try i think it's gonna look a little bit better goes down it comes up perfect to the left bounces off there so yeah this is looking real good all right that's all for today a bit shorter video than what we're used to I'm not sure what the next one will be about, maybe to bring some color into the game, like getting the level working. Uh, we'll see. Until then, thank you guys for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care now. Cheers.